Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session, Managing Cloud-Native Artifacts for Large-Scale Kubernetes Clusters. I'm Henry Zhang, Technical Director of Cloud-Native Lab, VMware China R&D. I'm the creator and maintainer of Harvard. My interest is in cloud computing, AI machine learning, and blockchain. Today with me is Mingming Pei, architect from NetEase. He's responsible for Qingzhou Cloud Native DevOps platform. He's also a Harvard maintainer. Here is today's agenda. We first talk about the two aspects of managing cloud native applications. Then we introduce how to use Harbor to manage cloud native artifacts. Next, we'll go through the case study of NetEase and how they manage artifacts for large scale Kubernetes cluster using Harbor. We all know that cloud native technologies become increasingly important to build modern applications. Usually, there are two aspects in managing cloud native applications. The first is the dynamic part, that is the runtime, how the applications run and how they are scaled up, monitored, backed up, and so on. The second aspect is the static part, that is artifacts. When applications are not running, they usually reside on storage device as files or some kind of artifacts. The most common and important cloud native artifacts are container images, Helm trusts, and so on. They usually there could be more like CNAV and so on to be managed in a cloud native environment. Given the importance of artifacts, we need to efficiently and securely manage artifacts when operating a cloud native platform. And Harbor, a graduated CNCF project, is designed to perform the tasks of managing cloud native artifacts. It supports OCI artifacts like Docker image, Helm chart, um, CNAPs, uh, open policy agents, singularities, and so on. In addition, Harbor provides a bunch of features on artifacts management, such as RBAC, role-based access control, uh, image isolation by project, uh, image retention, Im and immutable images. We will cover some of them shortly. The first artifact management feature I'd like to talk about is replication. This feature was created in Harvest early version 0.3. It allows two Harvest instances to synchronize the images from one to the other. Because the replication tasks are carried out automatically and reliably, users love and apply this feature in many scenarios. In the latest release of Harvest, it can support replications of artifacts across multiple cloud environments with various registry and services. We list some registry service here, such as Docker Hub, registry service in public cloud like AWS, uh, Google, Azure, AliCloud, and so on. It is very simple to move your artifacts between different environments. This will help a lot when managing your artifacts. Suppose you're running a large cluster with many nodes. If all nodes pull image from the public registry services, it will take up a lot of networking bandwidth to download the same images again and again. It is obvious, not optimal. Moreover, not all nodes within an organization are allowed to connect to the external registry. So Hubble provides a feature called proxy cache. This feature has been requested by many community users for quite some time. It is released in Harbor 2.1 recently. It is a special kind of Harbor project which can hold, catch the images and serve them locally. It saves external networking bandwidth and speed up the local distribution of images. Under the hood, 
it leverages replication capability of, of Harbor to pull images from remote sources when they are not available locally. Because cached images are stored under a Harbor project, all the project-related features in Harbor, such as quota, scanning, immutable tag, can all be applied to cached images. For any registered service in production, high availability and scalability must be considered. There are many ways to achieve HA of a registry service. I just introduced some principles here, which can be the guidelines for users to implement a production registry. The Harbor core services components are stateless, which means that they can be scaled out by running multiple instances of each component. The key here is to set up HA for persistent services like PostgreSQL, Redis, and shared storage. There are many existing solutions for these HA services. Just choose one of them that fits your environment. If you have multiple data centers or cloud environments that's running your uh, applications, you can establish an HA Harbor instance in each data center and environment so that they can back up each other. Um, the replication policy can be configured to synchronize artifacts between two environments. Also, PostgreSQL and Redis can be um, kept in sync by using some kind of synchronization software or mechanism. By adding load balancers in front of Harbor services, it provides high availability with an active standby configuration across two environments. This creates additional protection for registry service. If one data center or one environment goes down, the other can go live to continue the service. One thing to know is that the propagation delay of artifact replication between two data centers or two environments should be taken into consideration and when implementing such a solution. That is to say, artifacts stored in two data centers could be different when artifacts are being replicated. When artifacts are deleted from a registry, their storage space needs to be released and reclaimed. This process is called garbage collection. System administrators should perform garbage collection periodically to ensure the system does not run out of storage space. In the latest Harbor 2.1 release, garbage collection feature is improved and can be performed without any impact of image pushing, pulling, and deletion. This feature allows Harbor to keep providing artifact service while doing backend garbage cleanup. This is really crucial for a production system to be up and running continuously. When publishing a new version of the application to a cluster, we need to send the artifacts to every node. For a large scale Kubernetes cluster, it is a challenging task to distribute artifacts to all nodes within a short time frame. If there is only one registry instance servicing the entire cluster, the registry instantly become the, becomes the bottleneck of the distribution. So to address this distribution problem in a large cluster, peer-to-peer -peer distribution, distribution, distributing approach seems a feasible solution. Hubble can leverage the capabilities of P2P engines like Dragonfly and Kraken to accelerate the artifacts distribution. What Harvard does is to preheat the P2P network on one of the cluster. The idea is to distribute the artifacts to the P2P network before the request of the artifacts arrive. When the actual request comes in, the content is ready for distribution within the P2P network and can be transferred right away. In a case study of NetEast, we can see that the P2P approach improves performance significantly in a large cluster of many Kubernetes nodes. 
Harbor can work with multiple Kubernetes clusters as well. By setting up proper preheating policies, Harbor can send artifacts to each P2P cluster and make them ready for subsequent artifact distribution. When administrators manage artifacts, security is one thing they need to deal with. Harbor can help scan the content against the publicly known CVE databases. Based on the scanning result, Harbor reports vulnerabilities found in the artifacts so that administrators can take proper action, such as patching the image to remediate the vulnerability. This is not only crucial in a production environment, it can be used in CI pipeline during development phases to ensure all images created do not contain severe vulnerability. In addition to vulnerability scanning, Harbor can block pull requests if the image vulnerability exceeds a certain threshold level. Also, other features like content trust can ensure a prominence of the artifacts. And vulnerability scanning can be triggered automatically when an artifact has been pushed to the registry. If you want to allow some CVEs to exist in the images, uh, for example, if they, if they are not very critical, or if you know it is critical, but you want to make them uh, available for a while in your, in your enterprise or in your organizations, you can set the exception in the allow list. From time to time, users may have to have their own types of artifacts. If these artifacts follow the OCI specs, they can be managed and visualized by Harbor. The latest version of Harbor extends the function of the default artifacts processor. Users can define their own artifacts format and media types by following the OCI specs. Then the artifacts can be pushed to or put from Harbor. A benefit of storing artifacts in Harbor is that artifacts can be treated the same as container images and can be replicated to other places or enforced by role-based access control. And you also get all other features free from using Harbor. We have already seen partners utilizing Harbor for storing machine learning models as artifacts and reduce the operational complexities. There are many more to talk about Harvest capability of artifacts management, but I'd like to pass it to Ming Ming for sharing his experience in artifact management in NetEase. Uh, thank you, Henry. Uh, I'm Ming Ming uh, from NetEase. Today, I will introduce how we manage artifacts in NetEase. Uh, now, the container technology is widely used in NetEase. Uh, we use uh, container image, helm chart, operate bundle, uh, etc. as uh, artifacts. GitOps is also used in production, and we use Hub as the repository of cloud native uh, artifacts. And uh, now there are lots of uh, Kubernetes clusters in NetEase and 5,000 plus nodes in larger ones. Uh, we have more than uh, 20 hub instances and the largest hub instance manages about 100,000 images. Uh, let's take a look at our architecture. Uh, we developed uh, two uh, services to manage the hub instance is in uh, the Kubernetes clusters, and we have the uh, flexibility to combine the uh, relationships of these instances at the same time, uh, accessing them by the authority system of NetEase Cloud Native Platform has been established. In addition, uh, we integrated our NetEase object storage as backend for high availability and high performance. <clears throat> uh, how do we make Harbor uh, highly available in the case? 
And first, we address Hubble's high availability uh, of fire storage in two ways, uh, object storage and local fire storage. We use R-Sync, uh, you know, a fire synchronized tool to synchronize the data when using local fire system uh, for externally uh, dependent uh, high, high availability. We have used uh, the open source project story to address the high availability of PostgreSQL and uh, the HA proxy approach to address the high availability of uh, radius, uh, which you can find uh, a detailed description in Hubble community. In addition, uh, Hubble's monitoring, mainly armed at the scene, is enhanced, and uh, uh, the monitoring alarms of the things such as replication failure and P2P dispatching failure are achieved through metrics of uh, uh, Messias. This is how we approach the multi environment manage management of artifacts uh, first, do packaging and complete all kinds of tests in the uh, test environment. And then we tag the image with a release to trigger remote replication. Uh, the image will be uh, replicated to the um, production environment and then trigger the online deployment. Um, for large uh, scale distribution of the images, uh, we are facing two problems. Uh, uh, one is the uh, throughput, pressure in registry service, and uh, uh, next is uh, uh, network bandwidth pressure in backend storage. And we realized P2P distribution by integrating, uh, integrating uh, Hub and Clark through the mode of sharing uh, registry server. Uh, the complete design can be found in the community of Kraken. Uh, we finally achieved the goal of over 5,000 concurrent pros and 10 gigabytes plus image distribution uh, acceleration. And here I would like to uh, introduce some uh, features of uh, P2P distribution of Kraken. Uh, this is the test that uh, we made. Uh, you can see from the table, uh, the bandwidth the bound limit of P2P distribution is configurable. And uh, from the table, you can see a more layers and a smaller layer size cause lower uh, ut ut utiliz utilization of bandwidth. Uh, it means the distribution will be slower and the number of P2P peers brings little impact to the distribution performance. Uh, max 15 uh, kilos pe uh, peers supported officially, and it works well in our product environment now. We also pay attention to the uh, safety of uh, artifacts. Uh, Artifacts are scanned after packaged immediately. There are also two types of uh, quality gates. The pipeline gate and the dispatch gate are rules are set and they will be uh, go through to determine whether the artifacts should be prevented from uh, being used in production environment. And uh, finally, uh, let's uh, look at how we uh, manage the artifacts in CRCD. First, we create our CRCD uh, process with application uh, center. You can see the whole flow of our CRCD, and also I have introduced some related uh, processes earlier. And uh, besides that, uh, we uh, <clears throat> Following functions are also contained in CRCD stages. Uh, artifact version management, 
uh, artifact security and uh, CD triggered by image pushing webhook. The CRCD stages uh, are connected in series through code and artifacts. Uh, you can see from this, this picture, and uh, this is uh, the full CRCD flow in our company. And uh, that's of my share. Thank you. Back to Henry. Thanks, Mingming. I want to summarize a little bit here. So artifact management is an important aspect of operations in a cloud native environment. Registry is an ideal place for performing the management tasks of artifacts. Hover can be your choice of a powerful tools for managing your artifacts. Hover can provide high availability and scalability for the registry service and have replication, proxy caching, non-blocking GC, and so on. A whole bunch of powerful features that you can consider and leverage. Um, so as you can see in the case study of Landis, they use Harbor for the large scale Kubernetes cluster in the, for the artifacts management. Lastly, I want to introduce our new book um, of Harbor. It is the first book on Harbor in the world, uh, authored by the Harbor's maintainer and contributors. If you are interested in the content, please take a look. Thanks for listening to our session.